Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya Tejo Vari Madam Yatabini Mayo Yatratri Sargumusha Tejo Vari Madam Yatabini Mayo Yatratri Sargumusha Damna Swena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Swena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva all pervading personality of Godhead. All pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart the of The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material temporarily universes. manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are. I therefore real. meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental boat? Who is eternally existent in the transcendental? Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations. I meditate world. upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute dharma projita kaitra votra dharma projita kaitra votra paramo nirmatsaranam satam paramo nirmatsaranam satam bejyam vastava matra vastu bejyam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapa trayon bhuvanam shivadam tapo trayon bhuvanam shimad bhagavate mahamuni kute shimad bhagavate mahamuni kute kimva parir ishvaraha kimva parir ishvaraha sadyo hridi avarudyate tra sadyo hridi avarudyate tra kriti bihe susu subis dakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. Such truth uproots the three. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. He is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro kalitam falam. Nigama kalpatoro kalitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyatam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyatam. Ibata bhagavatam rasam malayam. Ibata bhagavatam rasam malayam. Muhur ahoras kabuhi bhavakaha. Muhur ahoras kabuhi bhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. Mature fruit, the desired tree of Vedic glory. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantastohi Bhadrani. Vidyantastohi Bhadrani. Vidunati Suhit Satam. Vidunati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. 
He is self-righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nastapresu bhadresu. Nastapresu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. In this way, a devotee, uh, in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavad. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavad. And from the devotee. And from the devotee. In, in a, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chete tar navidam. Chete tar navidam. Stifam satpe prasiddhati. Satfam prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes. Uh, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. By development of devotional service, one becomes free from the mode of passion. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure becomes goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hrudaya grantis. Vidyate hrudaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante just Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the heart not of material affection. Thus, the Bhakti Yoga serves the heart not of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables us to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing a uh, from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, by hearing from Krishna and uh, devotees in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Krantaraj, Kijay, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Text Number 3. Utsrijya Sarvata Sangam. Vigyata jita samstuti Vaya sake jaho sisyo Vaya sake Gangayam swam kalevaram Gangayam swam kalevaram Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Furthermore, after leaving all his associates the king surrendered himself as a disciple to the son of Vyasa, Sukadeva Goswami. And thus he was able to understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The word ajita is significant here. Maharaj, sorry, yeah. do, do you complete the translation in English? And thus he was able to understand the actual position of personality of God. I think so. And, he, and, and at, at last? And thus he was able to understand the actual position of personality of God. Oh, that's different then. Because here is, he, he carries on saying. What? He, in this translation here yeah. says, and at last he gave up his material body on the bank of the Ganges. Okay, well, it <laughs> shows you that there's uh, differences of, the, of translation. What's it saying? And thus? After God it says, and at last he gave up his material body on the bank of the Ganges.
Okay. The word Ajita is significant here. The personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is known as Ajita, or unconquerable. And he is so in every respect. No one can know his actual position. He is unconquerable by knowledge also. We have heard about this, about his Dhamma, or place, eternal Goloka Vrindavan. But there are many scholars who interpret this abode in different ways. But by the grace of a spiritual master like Sukadeva Goswami, <coughs> unto whom the king gave himself up as a most humble disciple, one is able to understand the actual position of the Lord. His eternal abode and his transcendental paraphernalia in that Dhamma or abode. Knowing the transcendental position of the Lord and the transcendental method by which one can approach that transcendental Dhamma, the king was confident about his ultimate destination, and by knowing this, he could leave aside everything material, even his own body, without any difficulty of attachment. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated, Param Dristva Nivartate. One can give up all connection with material attachment when one is able to see the Param or the superior quality of things. From Bhagavad Gita, we understand the quality of the Lord's energy that is superior to the material quality of energy. And by the grace of a bona fide spiritual master like Sukhdev Goswami, it is quite possible to know everything of the superior energy of the Lord by which the Lord manifests his eternal name, quality, pastimes, paraphernalia, and variegatedness. Unless one thoroughly understands this superior or eternal energy of the Lord, it is not possible to leave the material energy. However, one may theoretically speculate on the true nature of the absolute truth. By the grace of Lord Krishna, Maharaj Pariksit was able to receive the mercy of such a personality as Sukadeva Goswami, and thus was able to know the actual position of the unconquerable Lord. It is very difficult to find the Lord from the Vedic literatures, but it is very easy to know him by the mercy of a liberated devotee like Sukadeva Goswami. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of research here. Mm. Can you tell me what page you looked that up on? Well, I have it in, in Vedabase, in the iPhone version. It doesn't say the page exactly. Only text and number or so. So are you looking on database? Mm-hmm. And also it's on the board also. What? On the computer also it's the same. Some translation like you. That's also database anyway. Like me? No, no. Like what no. I read? No, like, like what you read? Okay. Because that doesn't make sense. Which one? The, does make the sense? one you read. Because the purport is about him getting instructed by Sukadeva Goswami, and the rest of the chapter, if I'm not mistaken, is about Sukadeva Goswami instructing him. Well, it, 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 it seems well connected. It's a bridge in the Amazon word for word. What? It's a bridge and the word for word. So, what does it say word for word? Yeah, what is the word for word? Yeah, yeah, it's called there. Uh, okay, do this. Okay, word for word, I have. Okay, let's see. All right, it's a little bit of a mystery. Uh, anyway, uh, 
we'll discuss this purport. It sounds quite reasonable here. But when he said thus, he was able to understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead, and at last, he gave his he gave up his material body on the bank of the Ganges. Okay, I have, and thus he was able to understand the actual position of personality of Godhead. That's, you that's have here. You have yeah, I have it in my phone too, but the book is not there. Oh, this is um, some problem. Um, Maybe they missed one line. Yeah, the, the Ganges then in a word for word translation, yes. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, let's read the. We'll go over the purport. Well, the main point of the purport is that unless you have a higher taste, you can't really give up <coughs> material sense gratification, and that, and the higher taste includes also understanding the superior energy of the Lord, by which the Lord. Manifest his eternal name, quality, pastimes, paraphernalia, and variegatedness. Unless one thoroughly understands the superior or eternal energy of the Lord, it is not possible to leave the material energy. However, one may theoretically speculate on the true nature of the absolute truth. By the grace of Lord Krishna Maharaj, Pariksit was able to receive the mercy of such a personality as Sukadeva Goswami, and thus he was able to know the actual position of the unconquerable Lord. It is very difficult to find the Lord from the Vedic literatures, but it's very easy to know him by the mercy of a liberated soul like Sukadeva Goswami. So this is something that not always understood, is that uh, the Vedic literatures have so much details that you get confused. And it seems that uh, <clears throat> Vyasadeva gave, gave more importance to the needs of the material body than to actually the ultimate goal of life. Uh, in writing everything that he wrote uh, uh, be, uh, with the exclusion of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So in other words, if you have nine tenths of a book talking about Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, and, or almost the whole book talking about Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, and just a little bit Bhagavad Gita uh, talking about the ultimate goal of life, it's easy for a person to get confused because of the sheer volume of, uh, of the literature. But it's impossible to misunderstand the Srimad Bhagavatam because the whole thing is about Krishna and his transcendental paraphernalia, his transcendental bodies, transcendental activities, etc. So uh, therefore he's saying here that it is very difficult to find the Lord from the Vedic literatures. It's very difficult. But it is very easy to know him by the mercy of a liberated devotee like Sukhdev Goswami. So this is the point. Without having the help of bona fide spiritual masters, and uh, previous acharyas and Srila Prabhupada, it's uh, almost impossible simply to read the Vedas and understand what the truth is. Now I discovered something interesting today and uh, I want to ask a question. So some of you were born in uh, families that worship Lord Shiva, is that right? Yeah. So have you when you uh, took part in different pujas for Lord Shiva or uh, Durga, at the end, did they say, 
Sarvam Krishnart Pranam Astu. Okay. Now, doesn't that seem to be a disconnect? Because the whole puja was about Lord Shiva or, or Mother Durga. But at the end, they say, Sarvam Mad Arpanam Astu. Right? Speak in the microphone. <laughs> it's very interesting. Very interesting. And also, even when we start the Ganesha puja, yeah. the you know the first uh, verse uh, that is recited is Suklam Bharadaram Vishnum yes. Shashi Varnam. So even though you know, I grew up thinking that that is the prayer for <laughs> for Lord Shiva, Lord Lord Ganesha. Oh, Ganesha, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And only after I understood that it's actually referring to the. It's from the Vishnu Sastram Sutra. It's referring to Lord Krishna or Lord yeah. Vishnu. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now this is extremely interesting. Now, do, you, do you know why they do that? Well, uh, because yet karosi yet asnasi yet jyosi dadasi yet tapasya sikonte yet purushwa madarpanam. So it says, Krishna says, everything you do and all austerities you perform and all charity that you give and uh, anything you give away in all anything you give away in all austerities you perform do that as an offering to me madarpanam so because of that verse even though they do pujas for ganesha or shiva or mata at the end they usually say Sarvam Krishna, usually say Sarvam Shri Krishna Madarpanam. Uh, that everything should be done as an offering to Krishna. Isn't that interesting? Did you learn something new today? <laughs> That's why you should come to class. <laughs> very, very interesting. Uh, it's, it's like amazing. So usually we, it's, people say, give me, please give me your blessings. So we say, uh, Krishna Matir Astu. May you always remember Krishna. But also, you can add on to that, uh, Sarvam Krishna Madarpanam Astu. May you give everything to Krishna, that's what it says, or sacrifice everything for Krishna. But then it's quite misleading because they, they hear the worship in Kanesh or Shiva, and then again they come to Krishna. So, do, 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 do they do that with understanding, really, what you're saying? Well, he just saw an example of it. He never understood it <laughs> till, till I just explained it now, although he was saying it or hearing it, you know. And they also, they, now, oh, he added another thing. They also beginning, begin the worship of uh, Ganesha with Suknam Bharadunam Vishnu by offering uh, glorification to Lord Vishnu. You see? So this is like, uh, they've kept something from the past, but it seems as if they're misunderstanding why they're saying that. Now maybe the pundit knows why, I don't know. It, it, to me, Mara, it seems like it's like kind of concoction. You know, like people who chant Hare Krishna mantra like Sahaja, and then they mix the mantra, uh, you know, like, what is mantra? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Jai, Govinda, something like this, you know. It's like uncoupted ideas, the mixed up things. No? Well, it's either, well, you could say that, but on the other hand, you could also say it's something left over from the past that was bona fide, but they forgot it. They're just saying it. They don't really understand why they're saying it. They just know that they have to say that. Yeah. Right. What? Come on, say, say it. Even the Shuklam, Bharadaram, Vishnu, all those things, they never explain the meaning for anything. Most of the puja. They just is, say it. They just say, because whatever pujas we do, it's for 
like you know as you say dhanam dehi dehi we are all material benefits people do puja for material benefits so their focus is more on uh, okay if i do this puja i get this result that's the main thing that's happening no but so, that that doesn't explain why the brahmana uh-huh. says the those verses no they don't explain it no that's but why does he say those verses He's the, been taught to do it that he's way. He's been taught. Yeah, he monotonously, like you know, he just recites like uh, so, most of the. So, but when the Brahmana speaks, sometimes they give some phony uh, lecture at the end of the mm-hmm. or during the uh, puja. Do they ever say that everything is meant for the pleasure of Krishna? They never say that. See, that's the point. They're just yeah. saying it because they've been told you have to say this. Say you worship this god, you get this benefit. You worship this god, your health will be good. Yeah. You worship this god, you you will get lot of wealth. so yeah. that's the thing they say and if you worship ganesha he'll take away all the hindrances in yeah. getting all the wealth basically they never say bhakti they they never use the word bhakti so right. that's why uh, we were all confused while growing up worshiping all the demigods and uh, of course we mainly worship Vish- vishnu growing up uh, the balaji so uh, but uh, we never no, know okay, that's but called, we are trained called, like uh, that that's called philosophized vishnu philosophy that means that <laughs> it's a uh it's something that's uh misunderstood by the people yeah yeah okay. it's very interesting isn't it you can see how something is left over from the past and the full meaning of i can just read the sanskrit of this the shuklam bhradaram vishnum shashivannam chaturbhujam prasanna vadanam dhyaye sarva vigno pasanti we meditate on shri vishnu who is wearing white clothes who is all pervading who is bright in appearance like the moon who is having four hands who is having a compassionate gracious face let us meditate on him to ward off all obstacles so we we are saying the the lord vishnu's thing but then we the goal, the, we, we concentrate we, on lord ganesha ganesha yeah it's very very interesting it is equal to say like they equalize the, the problem they equalize vishnu and the demigods that's the, the that's the motto right that oh, you can watch ganesh krishna the same so they put in ganesh and krishna at some level that's my understanding of that yeah well so, that's that's a fact proper talks about the philosophized vishnu let's see where he says that I think it's at the end of the twelfth chapter, maybe. One second, let me see. Seventeenth chapter. Okay, so okay, so Propad writes in the Shrimad Bhagavatam four three twenty three. It is said, "Satvam bisudam vasudeva sabditam." When a man is situated in pure goodness, he worships Vasudeva or Krishna. The purport is that those who are completely purified in the material modes of, of nature and who are transcendentally situated can worship the supreme personality of Godhead. The impersonalists are supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness and they worship five kinds of demigods. They worship the impersonal Vishnu form in the material world which is known as philosophized Vishnu. So they're talking about the impersonal Vishnu form. <laughs> They worship the impersonal Vishnu form in the material world which is known as philosophized Vishnu. Vishnu is an expansion of the supreme personality of Godhead, but the impersonalists because they do not ultimately believe in the supreme personality of Godhead imagine that the Vishnu form is just another aspect of the impersonal Brahman. Similarly, they imagine that Lord Brahma is the impersonal form in the mode material mode of passion thus they sometimes describe five kinds of gods that are worshipable 
but because they think that the actual truth is impersonal Brahman, they dispose of all worshipable objects at the ultimate end. In conclusion, the different qualities of the material modes of nature can be purified through association with persons who are of transcendental nature. Okay, now this is very important. Like for example, whenever it is Ganesh Chaturthi. So for, I think it's seven days, or maybe 10 days, I'm not sure. They either make a deity of Ganesh or they buy a deity in uh, Mayuri or uh, Apna Bazaar. <laughs> they worship it for a certain number of days and then they throw it away. We sarjan. Now, that was, that's, there's, there's no Vedic evidence of that uh, so called puja. It was started by, uh, uh, what was his name? Something Alok, uh, 150. Almost. Lokman, what is it? Lokman? Yeah, Lokman Til. Huh? Yeah, he wanted to get uh, unite the Hindus. So he, he started this thing. There's no evidence that you should do it. And, but now I understand why they throw it away at the end. Because they think, and this was explained here. It's the principle of the impersonal Vishnu or the philosophized Vishnu. Prabhupada explains that they imagine that the Vishnu form is just another aspect of the impersonal Brahman. Similarly, they imagine that Lord Brahma is the impersonal form in the material mode of passion. Thus, they sometimes describe five kinds of gods that are worshipable. But because they think that the actual truth is impersonal Brahman, they dispose, meaning they throw away, all worshipable objects at the ultimate end. In conclusion, the different qualities of the material modes of nature can be purified through association with persons who are of transcendental nature. So this is why uh, it says in this verse today that Maharaj Parikshit surrendered and became a disciple of the son of Vyasa, Sukadeva Goswami. And thus he was able to understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead. Right. So the Mayavadis, now all, all these people that do, you know, begin with uh, Suklam Bharataram Vishnu, right? And then end up with uh, Krishna Madarpanam, right? They're all Mayavadis. They say, they're all Mayavadis. No matter what, even though they recite the Vishnu Sasram Sotram, whatever, they're all Mayavadis. And at the end, they throw away the deity and think that the ultimate truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So now, today, we understand uh, something about the gigantic. Uh, misinformation that's going from generation to generation in South India and North India also. And this is unbelievable, but it's true. And you have the direct experience of it. See? Now, how to fix all this? Ah, we have to read Bhagavad Gita. See, so Prabhupada explains it here in one paragraph in the 17th chapter, verse number four. 17th chapter, verse number four. The impersonalists are supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness, and they worship five kinds of demigods. So, you know, you go to the Hindu temple, you see, you know, there's philosophized Vishnu, and there's Shiva, and there's Mata, and there's Ganapati. So that's something. Vishnu, Shiva, Mata, Ganapati, and there's Surya, I think. Lord Rama. Or Lord Rama. Well, it's, I think it's usually Shiva, it's Surya, but they add Lord Rama also. In North, Lord Rama is almost in all temples. Okay. So, actually, they're Mayavadis, although they're engaged in deity worship, right? Because it is. Uh, and they think they're all equal. That's the other thing. The Lord, Lord, Lord Vishnu is also an equal 
or to Ganapati who's equal to Shiva and so forth. So this is a whole hodgepodge. It's so nonsense. It's unbelievable. But yet it's going on as if it's bona fide for all these years. And even in South India, even in South India. You know. So it's very interesting. Okay, so, and then the, the origin of, uh, of uh, Sarvam Krishna Madarpanam Astu is yet karosi yadasnasi yad jahosi dadasiya, that verse from the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. So, but today I wanted to discuss something else. Uh, we have just enough time. We were supposed to discuss this a long time ago. We didn't do it. But today we're going to do it. And that's, I gave you homework to read sixth chapter, verse 40, uh, which says, sixth chapter, verse 40, which says, Partha naivatra amudra vinasas tasya vidyate nahikalyana kashchit durgatim tatagatshati. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Son of Prita, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. Now this purport is extremely interesting. And if we understand this, then we can see the difference between pure devotional service and impure devotional service, or let's say mixed devotional service. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, in the Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.17, Sri Narada Muni instructs Vyasadeva as follows, Chakpa Swadharmam Charanam Bhujam Harer Bhajan Apakvo Tapatet Tato Yadi Yatra Kwa Vabhudram Abud Amusyakim Ko Varta Apto Bhajatam Swadharma Taha if someone gives up all material prospects and takes complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no loss or degradation in any way. On the other hand, a non-devotee may fully engage in his occupational duties and yet not gain anything. For material prospects, there are many activities, both scriptural and customary. A transcendentalist is supposed to give up all material activities for the sake of spiritual advancement in life. Krishna consciousness. One may argue that by Krishna consciousness, one may attain the highest perfection if it is completed. But if one does not attain such a perfectional stage, then he loses both materially and spiritually because he gave up performing the material pujas to stay on the track of pure devotion, but he didn't complete the pure devotion. He may have fallen down or he may be a mixed devotee. So therefore, he's a two-time loser. He lost the material benefits of doing the pujas and he didn't attain the ultimate goal of going back to Godhead. Right? Now, Prabhupada says, it is enjoined in the scriptures that one has to suffer the reaction for not executing prescribed duties. Therefore, one who fails to discharge transcendental activities properly becomes subjected to these reactions. Okay, that makes sense. If you don't follow the rules and regulations strictly, you're going to get karmic reaction. Right? And that means you have to stay in the material world and you won't reach the goal of Krishna consciousness which is to go back to Godhead. The Bhagavatam assures the unsuccessful transcendentalist, the unsuccessful devotee, that there need be no worries, even though he may be subjected to the reaction for not perfectly executing prescribed duties. He is still not a loser. So this whole concept of being a two-time loser is being debunked here. On the other hand, one who simply follows strictly the prescribed duties need not necessarily attain auspicious results if he is lacking in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so if you, if you perform all your prescribed duties correctly, your mother said, on this day you have to worship Ganapati, and on this day you have to fast for Lord Shiva, and on this day you have to fast for Amata, and on this day for uh, 
10 days, you have to worship all the different forms of mata. And on this day, you do this. And on that day, you do that, right? And you do all that perfectly without even understanding who Krishna is in truth. It's a waste of time. The whole thing is a waste of time. Dharma, uh, Dharma some stuff. Uh, there's a the verse in Bhagavatam uh, <coughs> which says, Shrama Evahi Kevalam. Everything you've done is a waste of time unless you come to understand Krishna properly. Dharma swan stitak pumsa viswak sena kata suya nat padaya yadiratim. Shrama Evahi Kevalam. The occupational activities a man performs according to his own position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of the personality of Godhead. So here we see, this is, this is dangerous stuff. This is like, wow. Uh, all of India is doing this, and they think it's right, and they, they think they're better than Muslims, and they think they're better than the Christians, and they think this and that, and it's all a waste of time? My God, how is that possible? Well, we're going to read now why it's possible. The last line of this, uh, this paragraph says, on the other hand, one who simply follows strictly the prescribed duties need not necessarily attain auspicious results if he is lacking in Krishna consciousness. The purport may be understood as follows. Humanity may be divided into two sections, namely the regulated and the non-regulated. Those who are engaged simply in bestial sense gratifications without knowledge of their next life or spiritual salvation belong to the non-regulated section. And those who follow the principles of prescribed duties in the scriptures are classified amongst the regulated section. The non-regulated section, both civilized and uncivilized, educated and non-educated, strong and weak, are full of animal propensities. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. That's what it means. They're just interested in that. They're interested in guaranteeing these things. The low class, really low class people, they do it in a really low class way. And the high class people, they do the same low class activity in what's called a high class way. But they're both low class, right? <laughs> the non regulated section, both civilized and non civilized, educated, and non-educated, strong and weak, are full of animal propensities. Their activities are never auspicious because while enjoying the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, they perpetually remain in material existence, which is always miserable. On the other hand, those who are regulated by scriptural injunctions and who thus rise gradually to Krishna consciousness certainly progress in life. Now, next paragraph. Those who are following the path of auspiciousness can be divided into three sections. Namely, one, the followers of scriptural rules and regulations who are enjoying material prosperity. Two, those are called the karma yogis. Because they're being elevated, they're following Krishna consciousness, but they still have a material attachment. So they're elevated to the heavenly planets where they have tremendous sense gratification. And when their punya is finished, they come back down again, they start over. Two, those who are trying to find ultimate liberation from material existence. These are the jnana yogis. And most of them are impersonalists. And number three, those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness. So these are the people who are following the path of auspiciousness. They give up illicit sex. They give up gambling. They give up intoxication. They give up uh, maybe even, uh, and, and they give up uh, meat eating. But they might not be giving up speculation. <laughs> you see, uh, they still may be speculating. Those who are following the rules and regulations of the scriptures for material happiness may further 
may be further divided into two classes. And this is, the, this is what hurts when you hear this. They're, they're, they're enjoying material benefits by following Krishna consciousness, right? But there's two classes that do this. It's further divided into two classes. Those who are fruit of workers and those who desire no fruit for sense gratification. So, in other words, those who are following the path of Krishna consciousness or the upward path by giving up these bad habits, they're divided into two groups. People who are very satisfied by sense gratification and people, although they have tremendous material uh, facilities, they're not interested in sense gratification. Now, who would that be? Let's, let's try and understand practically who would that be. Well, one example would be Prahlad Maharaj, uh, Prithu Maharaj, and Lord Ramachandra, and uh, Parikshit Maharaj, Yudhisthira Maharaj, all of them had tremendous wealth, Dhruva Maharaj, they had tremendous wealth and tremendous opportunity for sense gratification. But they used all that wealth and all those opportunities. They didn't take the opportunities for sense gratification, but they used all that wealth and all those facilities, nice food, nice uh, palaces, and the, they use it all for the glorification of Krishna. But there are others who are enjoying those things and using it for sense gratification. Now, in, this, in the case of Lord Ramachandra, when he came back to Ayodhya, be, and after he had to banish his wife because people were criticizing him through her, therefore they were not respecting him properly. Therefore, he couldn't be a uh, ideal king if people have doubts about his integrity. So after he banishes his wife, he goes back to living like a renunciate, sleeping on the floor, uh, eating very little, and, and so forth. He did not, you know, from what I understand, not enjoy the, uh, the facilities of royal life, but he did the duties of royal life. Okay. So that, that's a perfect example. So those who are devotees of, of in Krishna consciousness, those who are following the rules and regulations of the scriptures for material happiness may be further divided into two classes. Those who are fruit of workers and those who desire no fruit for sense gratification. Those who are after fruit of results for sense gratification may be elevated to a higher standard of life, even to the higher planets. But still, because they are not free from material existence, they are not following the truly auspicious path. In other words, those are the people who are good people, but bad things happen to them. And it's, those bad things are not uh, Krishna using them as part of a plan, but they're actually karmic reactions. Now, sometimes good things happen to pure devotees, bad things happen to pure devotees, right? But that's because the, the Lord uses them uh, for one of his strategies to teach pu the public something or to uh, correct the situation. And in the end, they become glorified, not vilified. Okay. The only auspicious activities are those which lead one to liberation. And any activity which is not aimed at ultimate self-realization or liberation from the material bodily concept of life is not at all auspicious. Activity in Krishna consciousness is the only auspicious activity. And anyone who voluntarily accepts all bodily discomforts for the sake of making progress in the path of Krishna consciousness can be called a perfect transcendentalist, 
under severe austerities. And because the Eightfold Yoga system is directed toward the ultimate realization of Krishna consciousness, such practice is also auspicious, one who follows it strictly. And no one who is trying his best in this matter need fear degradation. Okay, so this is a complicated purport. There are a lot of subcategories. <laughs> and one of those subcategories, although it's part, it seems to be part of the progressive path, actually leads to a dead end. Um, so one has to be completely, so the verse that's important <clears throat> there are many verses that are important, but in Bhagavad Gita, Vihaya Kamam Yasarvam Pumam Charati Nispraha, Nir Mamo Nirahankada Sansar Tim Adigachati. Second chapter, 71st verse says, Vihaya Kamam Yasarvam, one who is completely free of all material desires. <clears throat> for sense gratification. Pumam charati nispriha. And he lives desireless. No, in other words, no material desires, only desires to please Krishna. Nirmamo nirahankara, he's not interested in sense gratification, and he has no false ego. Sasantim adigachati, such a person actually attains peace real peace. And in the purport, Prabhupada says, to become desireless means not to desire anything for sense gratification. So here we see in that last category where they divide, uh, they're, first of all, they say there's three types of people following the progressive path. One is one, those who desire sense gratification, or those who are enjoying sense gratification, and then those who are trying to find the, what the truth is, the Gana yogis, and then those who are devotees. That first category can be divided into two categories, two subcategories. That is, those who are actually enjoying sense gratification or material opulence, and those who are not interested in sense gratification. Okay? So those who are not interested in sense gratification are defined in second chapter, verse 71. Although they may be getting all kinds of material facilities and opulence and, and, and glorification, whatever. They're actually desireless because they do not desire anything for sense gratification. In other words, desire for becoming Krishna conscious is actually desireless. To understand one's actual position as the eternal servitor of Krishna without falsely claiming this material body to be oneself and without falsely claiming proprietorship over anything in the world is the perfect stage of Krishna consciousness. So, uh, when they say, sarvam krishna madarpanam astu, that means that they're not falsely claiming any proprietorship over anything. They, they recognize that everything belongs to Krishna and everything should be offered to Krishna. All sacrifices, everything. Okay. One who is situated in this perfect stage knows that because Krishna is the proprietor of everything, everything must be used for the satisfaction of Krishna. Arjuna did not want to fight for his own sense satisfaction, but when he became fully Krishna conscious, he fought because Krishna wanted him to fight. For himself, there was no desire to fight. But for Krishna, the same Arjuna fought to his best ability. Real desirelessness is desire for the satisfaction of Krishna, not an artificial attempt to abolish desires. That's the Mayavadis. They want to abolish all desires. The living entity cannot be desireless or senseless, but he does have to change the quality of the desires. A materially desireless person certainly knows that everything belongs to Krishna, Ishvaisham idam sarva, and therefore he does not falsely claim proprietorship over anything. This transcendental knowledge is based on self-realization, namely knowing perfectly well that every living entity is an eternal part and parcel of Krishna and spiritual identity, and that the eternal position of the living entity is therefore never on the level of Krishna or greater than him. 
This understanding of Krishna consciousness is the basic principle of real peace. Srila Prabhupada ki jay, oh glories to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions? We see all these uh, uh, ritual conducted by those brahmanas. Uh, is that because it is said uh, the brahminical class of people in this Kali Yuga, they were previous demons, and this Kali Yuga, they, they are brahmins, so therefore they're misleading people. Uh, maybe. <laughs> where, did you, said, where did you read that? Vibhishan said when he, when he, um, he left his brother Ravana, he kicked out basically, he was kicked out by Brahman, uh, his brother, and he came to take shelter of Lord, Ch Lord Ram on the other side. Right. But the associates of Lord Ram, they, they cautioned Lord Ram, said, no, you can't accept him. Because he has come here like a demon, like, like a spy. Yeah. yeah. So don't don't trust him. You know, he, he will steal a plan and strategy and war strategy and then this way. But Lord Ram, because the Supreme Lord, he said, "No, it's my mission. If anybody takes shelter of me, I should give me shelter." And right. then he assured them that you know, give up your doubt. He's definitely he's genuine. He's my genuine devotee. Uh, Vibhishan was my devotee. Yeah. So Lord, Lord Ram pacified all his associates. So then, before that, uh, Vivishan said, actually, if I'm really, I came as a spire, and uh, I'm telling lie, then I'll take birth in Kali Yuga. Okay. Yeah, that's meaning, that means that... Well, if you, no, if someone tells a lie, they are not a Brahmana. No, this if is a not Brahmana a Brahmana tells a lie, he's not a Brahmana. No, the, the reason he said this, because he was demon, so then he would take birth as a Brahman in Kali Yuga. That's all the idea. Vivishan okay. said so. So to prove that actually he was, he was, he was honest, he didn't, he didn't, he, he was speaking, he wanted to take shelter all around. No, wait so, a minute. But he was not, was he a Brahmana? Uh, Vivishan? No, he was a demon. Although he was born, they, 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 um, his father, rather, his father was a Brahmin. Yeah, yeah. His mother yeah. was not. Exactly. Yeah, but but you're saying that uh, he said, if I'm lying or if I'm coming here on false pretense, then uh -huh. I'll take birth as a Brahmana in Kali Yuga. Yeah. So that's that's your basis for saying that these modern Brahmanas that they actually previously were demons. Yeah, because it's in Shastra. The, 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 the demons of previous ages, they'll take birth as a Brahmin Kali Yuga. There's a verse, actually, I can't remember that. Why don't you find it? You come back and give, give us that verse. Yeah, there's a verse. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll see what I found it. I had in lectures, and also there's a quote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm glad I was born in a Sudra family. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been dangerous taking birth in a Brahmana family. <laughs> See, that's why they did so many horrible things. They, they threatened, you know, Vaishnavas, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, They were the ones, they, 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 they were plotting to kill them. Yeah. So, and when you go in a place like Jagannath Puri, those Brahmin, you know, they, they're very, very arrogant, you know. If you don't, you don't satisfy them, they curse you. They take the Brahminical food, they curse you, you know. So they're very harsh, you know. That's because they, they actually, internally they're demons, but externally they, they're Brahmin. Unbelievable. As I said, the real Brahmin Kali Yuga only Vaishnava. Okay, well, we're going to find out. <laughs> and find that verse. We're really interested in that verse. Alibo. Oh, yeah. is the Prabhupada Kichi. Yeah, and if in, if in those who read Ramayana, if it, they can come to the. Vivishan directly quoted that verse. I just can I heard it, but I. I, I 
that's your homework.